Greetings Aquarius and Aquarius Rising. This is your Western forecast for May 2024. The major theme is home and family and real estate. You could even be expanding your family um, with a child. There could be big family reunions, weddings. The reason I'm saying all of this is there's a five planet lineup in Taurus. If you have three planets in a sign, that's a major emphasis. So for the whole world, five planets in Taurus. Taurus can be really stubborn, determined, loyal, persevering energies. And in Taurus, this major emphasis in Taurus is four signs past Aquarius. The fourth house represents home, family, and real estate. We're also going to have Jupiter that's been in Taurus for one year from May 2023 to the end of May 2024. It's leaving Taurus, been in your fourth house of home and family, and on May the 25th, 2024, expansive lucky Jupiter is moving into Gemini, a fellow air sign. Aquarius is an air sign. Gemini is an air sign. So this Jupiter in Gemini overall is bringing a lot luckier, fortunate energies to you, but it's moving into the fifth house because Gemini is five signs past Aquarius. The fifth house can represent children, romance, parties, vacations, entertainment. So we're starting with a major emphasis on the fourth of family, and we go into the fifth, which is more celebra celebrating, um, vacationing, children. And Mars is a two-year cycle. I talked about this in last month's video. Mars is in Aries. Aries is the sign ruled by Mars. So Mars is at home and really strong and forceful and confident when it transits Aries. And that's from in the first part, middle part of April, all of May through the first week of the first week of June. So that Mars, that aggressive, ambitious, assertive Mars in Aries, Aries is three signs past Aquarius. So the third house is the house of communications and learning and selling. Um, but talking about family, the third house has a lot to do with uh, your siblings or neighbors. And in your home, you might be throwing a, a, a party inviting your neighbors, or you're making new friends with neighbors, or, um, or you could be getting really involved with organizing parties and vacations with a sibling. This is how all this energy is unfolding. Now, before I break down the Taurus and the Gemini and how it's going to apply to you, if you enjoy these kinds of videos and would like to see more of them, click like and subscribe. And don't forget to click on the notification bell so you can receive the latest postings. And if you go into the description box underneath the video, you'll find direct links to book an astrology reading or to sign up for my free daily message. All right, so the sun is in Taurus the first three weeks of every May, actually the last week of April, the sun went into Taurus once a year. Wherever the sun is shining in, um, just kind of, it's called solar astrology, not knowing your individual chart, but for Aquarius or Aquarius risings in general, that sun is putting a real emphasis on the fourth house matters, home, family, real estate. Venus is the ruler of Taurus, Venus is loving, it's creative, it's pleasurable, it's very benefic energies, and the Venus is also in Taurus. Taurus is ruled by Venus, so Venus is really strong and in, at home in the sign of Taurus. So as we go into 
May, Venus is in Taurus, being highlighted with the Sun in Taurus, in your fourth house till May the 23rd. The Jupiter has been in that Taurus in your fourth house since last, April, last um, May 2023, and by the end of May, May the 25th, 2024, the Jupiter leaves the fourth house of real estate and family and goes into the fifth house of fun and games and investments. Family could have been supported, and fourth house, family, fifth house, all that entertainment. You could be entertaining more at home. There might be a family reunion, a family wedding, but that's with Jupiter in the past 12 months, moving through your fourth house. Sometimes it means um, moving to a bigger place or buying another place. Now, this Jupiter then goes into Gemini, which is going an air sign, very favorable for you being Aquarius and air sign. So Jupiter brings all this promise and expansiveness to fifth house matters. That fifth house can mean children, and the fourth house can mean family. Um, that fifth house can represent a lot of creative energy. Um, so um, you could be remodeling and redesigning your home. That's the fourth house. The new moon on May the 7th is in Taurus. And it's going to hold that Taurus energy of the fourth house of home and family for four weeks through the first week of June. Now the sun leaves Taurus on May the 20th, but that new moon is still holding that Taurus fourth house energy into the first week of June. But the new moon is where our intentions are now focused upon, where we're planting seeds for new, you know, new directions, new opportunities. And this new moon, for everybody, is aligned with Uranus. So there could be a lot of sudden, unexpected surprises to upsets, um, breakthrough energies, but it's all around home and family. Some of you may be suddenly deciding to move, relocate, remodel the home, or there might be an unexpected family event, and that could be positive if you find out that somebody's having a baby, or one of your relative close inner circle family is getting married, and that could be this unexpected sudden event mixed with that fifth house of all that pleasure and enjoyment. But back to the new moon. The new moon is putting that, uh, planting those seeds of intention with family matters, with real estate matters. On May the 7th, two weeks later, is the full moon, when everything is more revealed, when everything culminates and comes to a head. This full moon is going to be in Sagittarius. And Sagittarius is 11 signs past Aquarius. So what's lighting up, what's, come, what's being revealed coming to a head is 11th house matters. 11th house can represent social networking, group activities, um, a lot of camaraderie with friendships. But I look at the 11th house, which is a very social, friendly area of the chart, and you could be getting a lot of support from friends and associates. But I look to the 11th house as putting a spotlight on your long-range goals and dreams and aspirations. And so it could be that about family matters, about real estate matters, that was those ideas we're being initiated with the new moon on May the 7th. Two weeks later, you might be really looking at the more long-term, making long-term plans with family, with real estate. Now, this is part of the forecast where I like to examine how all these various planetary energies can impact your body, 
your relationships, your business. Now, I've already talked about most of this already, but when it comes to um, your health, your energy, your vitality, having expansive Jupiter going into Gemini, which is very compatible with Aquarius, and you're going to be feeling more of this exuberance and expansiveness and optimism for the next year. But also, as the Jupiter is in an air sign of Gemini, so positive for you, it's also Gemini is moving into the fifth house. And the fifth house is the sector of fun and games and sports and recreational activities. So there's a lot of this busyness and activity in a joyful way, in a playful way. Fifth house also deals with children. And over the next year, many Aquarius, Aquarius risings may be having a child, talking about having a child, working with children. And that would also be expanding the whole family and especially with all those five planets, it's really locking in some long-term um, energies. And then when it comes to love affairs and romance, having Venus, the planet of love and cooperation and harmony and union, Venus is going into the fifth house of romance and children and vacations and all this pleasurable energies. So as you go to the end of May, going into June with that Venus, pleasurable Venus, but also optimistic, expansive Jupiter and the full moon on May the 23rd in the 11th house of more group energies, more, um, more networking, social energies, I think for a lot of Aquarius and Aquarius rising, from the end of May going into June, there could be, um, well, having the children, bringing romance, more romance back into an existing relationships, like by going to parties, going dancing, going on a vacation, all these fifth house matters. Um, but you could also, if you're single, you don't have to be single, but with all those Gemini, that Gemini energy, especially with Jupiter in the fifth house of romance, there might be an infatuation. And maybe you're falling in love again with your current partner, and that would be really great. And then finally, with business, the number one focus is on agriculture, land, real estate. And the fifth house, which in business can mean investing, speculating on real estate, or the fifth house could be, um, or that fifth house is all this um, entertainment um, and creative energies. So you could be redesigning and the home, buying new furniture, painting the walls, um, certainly all that remodeling. And that could be all part of an investment if you're looking long range to perhaps sell. And also Mars, very strong every two years in that third house. The third house is the sector of selling and that Mars is all that assertiveness. But the third house can mean meetings, um, a lot of errands, a lot of mental busyness. So you could be really active with running around with that Mars in the third house looking for properties or selling. And that could be buying and selling personally in uh, real estate for you or professionally if you're in the real estate business and but if you are just, um, uh, forget real estate, that Mars in the third is really strong for selling. And you could be selling um, domestic products, you know, with that heavy fourth house energies. 
So I want to thank you for watching. If you like information on how to book an astrology reading or to check out my two question offer, visit my website at cardino.go. That's .co. Until next month, be safe and well.